Hello, everyone, and welcome to another video on our own devices. I'm Jean Messier, and today we are having a look at yet another mid-century mechanical adding machine. What can I say? I can't get enough of these things. There are hundreds of different models out there, and each of them is historically and mechanically interesting in its own right. Now, the model we're looking at today is called a lightning adding machine, and this is manufactured from the mid-1940s to the early 1960s by the Lightning Adding Machine Company of Los Angeles, with this particular model being imported into Canada by Lightning Distributors of Ottawa. Now, the design and corporate history of the lightning adding machine is rather convoluted, so I'm going to try to summarize it as best I can. Now, the first version of this particular mechanism was the calcumeter, which was patented in 1901 by James Walsh and manufactured by the Morrison Walsh Company of Trenton, New York, starting in 1903. However, this mechanism was rather complicated and expensive to produce, and in 1905, one Richard Bonham patented a much simpler mechanism and founded the firm Bonham & Schramm in Chicago to manufacture and sell his design. And the Bonham & Schramm design, along with other simpler mechanical calculators, managed to push the calculator off the market by 1915. Now, by the early 1920s, a number of competitors to Bonham and Schramm had emerged, including the Smallwood Calculator Company of Oakland, California, the Champion Calculator Company of Cleveland, Ohio, and the Calculator Corporation and Pangborn Adding Machine Company of Grand Rapids, Michigan. And the calculators sold by all these companies were virtually identical, varying only in small cosmetic details. For example, the original BNS machines had a plain brass finish, whereas the Calculator Corporation machines had a black enamel finish and came with a wooden desk stand. The machines sold by BNS, Pangborn, and Calculator Corp were even all made in the same sheet metal stamping facility in Grand Rapids, Michigan, on a job shop basis. Now, in 1921, the manager of the Calculator Corporation, one Russell Hook, patented an improved version that he called the Lightning Calculator. And that same year, the Lightning Calculator Company was established. Now, it's not quite clear whether this is just a renamed Calculator Corporation or whether it was a separate company spun off by Hook in order to market his new design. It appears that the latter is most likely because in that same year, 1921, the Pangborn Adding Machine Company, founded by Frank Pangborn, emerges and begins selling Calculator Corporation machines rebadged under its own name. Literally, these machines are stamped Calculator Corporation, but have a decal with the Pangborn name applied over the stamping. So what seems to have happened here is that Russell Hook spun off the Lightning Calculator Company from the Calculator Corporation and sold the remaining patents and assets of Calculator Corporation to Pangborn. Now, this deal seems to have gone sour at some point because in 1922, Pangborn sued Hook for patent infringement. Now, we don't know what the result of this particular lawsuit was. What we do know is that by 1924, Pangborn ceases to exist as a company. It disappears off of all corporate records. Either they went under or they were bought out by Hook or both. Whatever the case... Hook continued to manage the Lightning Calculator Company until around 1940, and shortly thereafter, the company ceased production due to the U.S. entry into the Second World War. However, just after the war, in 1946, one Ernest Thornton, the founder and owner of the California Typewriter Exchange, purchased the company and moved it to Los Angeles, renaming it the Lightning Adding Machine Company. And he managed this company until 1953, when it was taken over by Max Dworsky and Martin Walsburn, who also owned the Los Angeles Adding Machine Company. And in this form, the company continued to produce Lightning Adding Machines until around 1959, though the units themselves continued to be marketed as late as 1969. And during this period, more sophisticated mechanical and later digital calculators capable of multiplication and division, as well as simple addition and subtraction, had started to push these earlier simpler machines off the market. Nonetheless, in its heyday, the Lightning Calculator was extremely popular, with around 2 million being produced in Los Angeles between 1946 and 1959. And so they're very common to find on the collector's market today. So that is a very brief overview of the development and corporate history of the Lightning adding machine, which really goes to show that when it comes to technological development, 
it's almost never a straight line. There are always a bunch of twists and turns, especially when it involves a bunch of different companies sort of fighting over the same patents. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's actually have a closer look at this and see how it actually works. As you can see, this can be used on its own on a desktop, but also comes with a handy angled stand. Originally, these were made out of wood, but when the company was re-established in Los Angeles, this was changed to molded Bakelite. Now, the first 1946 manufactured stands only came in green, but later other colors were added, including gray and, as in this case, brown. The machines themselves originally came only in black, but later other colors became available, including green like this one, tan, red, gray, and apparently even plaid. And these originally retailed for $12.95, or around $130 today. Like many of the other mechanical calculators we've looked at, this has seven input dials with matching readout windows. As this machine is intended for office work, it is arranged with two decimal places for cents and five for dollars, allowing you to add up to $99,999.99. While you can easily operate this with a regular pen or pencil, it does come with a handy turned aluminum stylus, which can be stored on the little shelf on the desk stand. To enter a number, you place the stylus in the corresponding hole on the dial and rotate it clockwise to the stop, rather like dialing a rotary phone. You'll see that when the dial rotates past 9, it increments the adjacent dial up by 1. Now these dials can be rotated counterclockwise, but they won't increment the adjacent dial in this direction, meaning the machine can't be used directly for subtraction. Instead, you have to make use of the so-called 9's complement method, which I've gone over in previous videos on mechanical adding machines. Thankfully, however, in this model, that process is made a lot easier through the use of these little red arrows on each of the dials. For example, the included manual gives the sample problem of 674.3 minus 428.87. Perform this calculation, you first enter the complement of 674.3 by placing the stylus on the arrow of each dial and dragging it over to the appropriate digit, 6, 7, 4, etc. In this case, this will yield 325.69 in the readout windows, but that is irrelevant to the calculation. You then enter 428.87 as per usual, placing the stylus in the hole opposite the appropriate digit and dragging it to the stop, then read out the numbers across from the arrows, not the readout windows, to yield the answer of 245.43. And finally, to clear the machine, we simply pull out this bar on the left-hand side and all the readout windows reset to zero. Now, this design might seem very intuitive, very similar to the other adding machines we've had a look at on this channel. However, this is actually a huge improvement over the older Calculator Corporation designs. See, those didn't have a separate input and output dial. Rather, one of the stylus holes on each dial was elongated to show you which number was being selected at any given time. However, because these holes would be in multiple different positions on each dial, it was very hard to read. And so this system with a separate readout dials and all of the windows aligned along the top is much more convenient to use. Now, the first Grand Rapids manufactured machines didn't have this clearing bar, nor did the first Los Angeles produced machines. That feature wouldn't be added until 1948. And those improved versions were painted green, just as in this example. Now, I don't actually know when exactly this particular example was made, Typically, the date is actually stamped on the bottom tray underneath this felt pad, but this pad is in such good condition I didn't want to risk ripping it up just to find the manufacturing date. Suffice to say, it is somewhere between 1948 and 1956 when the third and final version of the Los Angeles Lightning Adding Machine was introduced. These were colored gray and they had input dials that worked in both directions, allowing you to perform subtraction directly without having to resort to the nines complement method. Right, so let's actually take this apart and see how it actually works. While the older Calculator Corporation machines were held together with rivets, making them difficult to disassemble, the later lightning machines were closed using metal taps. And if we unfold these, the machine splits into top and bottom aluminum trays and a steel chassis holding the actual mechanism. As you can see, we have our input dials, which engage with and rotate the readout dials, which are indexed and held in place by the spring-loaded pulls. Each input dial also has one oddly shaped gear tooth, which engages with and increments the adjacent readout dial when it rotates past zero. However, this tooth is asymmetrical and does not engage in reverse, preventing subtraction from being carried out directly. 
In the third and final version of the Los Angeles Lightning, this tooth was replaced by a vertical pin on the input dial that engaged in a split tooth on the readout dial, allowing the transfer to take place in both directions. Finally, if we flip the chassis over, we can see how the clearing mechanism works. Input dials are connected by a short shaft through the chassis to these pinion gears on the back to engage with this rat gear on the clearing bar. This slides along these slots and pins, and as you can see, these slots are kinked so that when I pull the clearing bar out, it drops down so that the rack engages with the pinions and rotates them to zero. The gear tooth at the zero position on each pinion gear is missing so that once the gears reach zero, the rack no longer engages and rotation stops. And on the back, you can also see the coil springs attached to the clearing bar and the pulls. Now, the earlier Lightning adding machine used soft copper leaf springs, which allowed them to operate more smoothly, but which tended to fatigue and crack over time. And so eventually they were replaced with coil springs, as you see here which greatly improved the durability and longevity of the mechanism, but at the cost of rougher operation. Now, before we end the video, something worth pointing out is how machines like this depend on manufacturing precision in order to work at all. If these gear teeth were cut just slightly out of shape, if the input and output dials were mounted just a little off center, at best, this machine would be prone to rough operation or inaccuracies, or at worst, it would jam up completely and would not work at all. And this has been a long-standing problem with these types of mechanical adding machines, especially the problem of as you add more wheels, more decimal places, you add friction to the system so that the larger the machine, the harder it is to operate. And so this has been a problem that inventors have spent considerable time and energy trying to solve. So for example, one of the first successful mechanical calculators was the Pascaline, which was introduced in 1642 by French polymath Blaise Pascal. Now, funnily enough, Pascal invented this in order to help his father, who was a tax collector, perform long repetitive arithmetic, proving that when it comes to the drivers of technological innovation, it's always either death or taxes. Anyway, Pascal solved the problem of tens transfers over multiple wheels by using turret gears to translate the motion from the vertically mounted input and output dials to horizontally mounted drums and transmitting the tens transfer between the drums using a mechanism called a sautoir from the French sauté or to jump. So how this worked is that as the drum rotated from 1 to 9, it would lift up and cock the sautoir. And then when it rotated past 0, the sautoir would drop under gravity and increment the next drum over by 1. And since the drums were not directly connected to one another, you could add as many drums as you want without increasing friction. Meaning that, as Pascal boasted, a machine with 10,000 drums would operate just as smoothly as one with two. Now... These types of convoluted mechanisms were necessary to overcome the inherent limitations of 17th century manufacturing methods. However, they necessarily made the Pascalin extremely time-consuming and expensive to produce, and indeed, during his lifetime, Pascal only sold around 20 of them. It wasn't until several centuries later that industrial stamping, machining, and injection molding methods allowed for the degree of consistent precision to allow simpler direct geared adding machines to be mass produced and sold at a reasonable price. So as is always the case, the viability of one form of technology, in this case, an affordable mechanical calculator, depends greatly on other developments in technology, in this case, manufacturing methods. So that is all I have for you today. That was an extremely brief dip into the wildly complicated world of mechanical calculating machines. But as I said, there are hundreds of different varieties of these out there. And as I find more and more of them, I will feature them in their own videos on this channel and try to fill in that fascinating tapestry. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Another video where we'll look at yet more adding machines and other fascinating devices just like this one. Until then, I'm Jean Messier from Our Own Devices. Have a great day.